gospel reading for this Christ the King Sunday can be found in the 18th chapter of John, beginning with the 33rd verse. Pilate entered the headquarters again and summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus asked, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? And Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked, So you are a king? And Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Today is Christ the King Sunday, and since we're right at the beginning of Thanksgiving, our emphasis is on giving thanks and praise to God. But one of the things that we probably don't think about giving thanks to God for very much are God's attributes. And when it comes to Christ the King Sunday, the three readings that we have today lift up some very unique attributes that we can give thanks to to God for in Christ. The first reading is from the seventh chapter of Daniel. And it's at the very end of time, Jesus comes as the Ancient of Days. And it's a reminder that He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. There are bookends on history. And I don't know about you, but in this world right now, it seems like things are very much out of control. And it's a reminder to us that King Jesus is in control, that he is a sovereign Lord, that he has a plan for each and every one of us. And then in the second reading, Revelation, King Jesus comes back at the end of time, and what we're told there is that he comes back and he shows the wounds in his hands and his side. Isn't that amazing? He still has those all the way through eternity. He has those to remind us that by his wounds we are healed. It's his compassion and his love that he lifts up more than anything else. And in this world where there seems to be so much hatred and, and so much hurt going on in so many different ways, it means everything to be able to know that we have a king who rules with gentleness, compassion, and love. Then the reading from John. Jesus before Pilate. Jesus and Pilate get in this dialogue about truth. What is truth? And Jesus lets us know that he doesn't just point to the truth, but he is the way and the truth and the life. We have so many things to give thanks to God for. This morning we give thanks to God for our youth who are going to share with us a really neat skit that reminds us that unfortunately we spend a lot more time asking God for things than thanking God for those things that he's blessed us with. Sure look busy, except those two. Yes, they are. Where are we going? We are passing through the BOPR. What? The Bureau of Prayer Reports. This is the receiving section. Here, all prayer requests made to God are received. There sure are a lot of those. Yes, the angels are busy over time sorting out so many prayer requests from people all over the world. This is the packaging and delivery section. Here, the requests that people ask for are processed and answers are delivered back to those who asked for them. I can't believe how busy these angels are. I guess because so many requests have been made and have been packaged for delivery to Earth. This is the thanks section. What is that? What are they doing? This is where prayers of thanks are received. 
They are doing pretty much nothing because so few prayers of thanks are ever sent. People are great at asking God for things, but giving thanks for what he has done, not so good. Hey, we found one. It is so sad, you see, after people have prayers answered, when they receive the blessings that they asked for, very few send back acknowledgments of thanks to God. So that is why those angels are playing with their phones. Not much else to do. How does one acknowledge God's blessings? Simple. Just pray, thank you, Lord. What blessings should they acknowledge? All of them, really. But if you have food in the refrigerator, clothes on your back, a roof over your head, a place to sleep, you are richer than 75% of this world. If you have money in the bank, in your wallet, and spare change in a dish, you are among the top 8% of the world's wealth. If you woke up this morning with more health and illness, you are more blessed than the many who will not ever survive this day. If you have never experienced the fear of battle, the loneliness of imprisonment, the agony of torture, or the pangs of starvation, you are ahead of 700 million people in the world. If even if in the church were to fear of harassment, arrest, torture, or death, you are indeed a more blessed 3 billion people in the world. If your parents are still alive and still married, you are very rare. If you can hold your head up and smile, you are not the norm. You are unique to all those in doubt and despair. Okay, so what do I do? Count your blessings and, and give, give thanks. thanks.